Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today I want to introduce uh, the 10 cap method of valuation from Phil Town. Uh, it seems to be becoming one of his uh, preferred methods for valuing stocks to try to figure out if there's a margin of safety, uh, if we can buy at a compelling discount um, to, to current value. So I want to walk through uh, the 10 cap method by Phil Town using Micron stock as an example. Uh, but first, I just want to talk a little bit about what is 10 cap. So cap really comes from cap rate or capitalization rate. Uh, it's a real estate investing term. And the definition of the capitalization rate is the rate of return on a real estate investment property based on the income that the property is expected to generate. Um, and we can really use this for stocks uh, if we calculate kind of the owner earnings, right? And then we compare the owner earnings to what it would cost to buy the whole business, uh, which I've seen others use market cap for that. Uh, but I think a more accurate uh, representation of what it would cost to buy a whole business is enterprise value. Enterprise value considers the market cap, of course. It also considers debt and cash on the balance sheet uh, and some other things like minority interest holders, preferred stock, things like that. So I'm going to be using enterprise value in this example. So here's what we need in order to come up with the cap right, for, for Micron. Uh, we need the operating cash flow. I'm going to be using 2019 figures. So I've uh, pulled up the 2019 10K, which is the annual report for Micron. So we're going to find the 2019 uh, operating cash flow. We're going to look at the maintenance capital expenditures. Okay. So unfortunately, Micron doesn't have uh, maintenance CapEx broken out from kind of growth CapEx. Uh, so we're going to use Phil Town's rule of thumb on this, which is just to take half of the total CapEx for 2019 in order to estimate what the maintenance capital expenditures is. Uh, and then we're going to need to add the income tax provision from 2019. So those three inputs are going to give us uh, owner earnings. For, for 2019. Uh, and then we simply divide owner earnings over uh, enterprise value to get a uh, percentage, which is going to be our cap rate for, um, for Micron. So let's dive right into it. So in order to find the operating cash flow, uh, I've got it right here. So we're going to go to the cash flow statement. And we're going to look at net cash provided by operating activities. Uh, and this is for the year 2019. Uh, and so the figure we're going to input is 13,189 million. So it's 13,189 million. So 13,189, I'm going to keep it in millions. So all of these figures are going to be in millions. So the maintenance CapEx, uh, I looked up CapEx earlier. It's on page 37. So let's find that. <clears throat> so there's, so it's kind of in just a paragraph summary form. We're going to look at investing activities for 2019. You can see net cash used for investing ag activities consisted primarily of $9.03 billion of expenditures for property, plant, and equipment. So that's the figure we're gonna use as the total CapEx. Oh, this froze on me. That's the, that's the figure we're gonna use for total CapEx. So let's plug that in here. Nine. And that was given in billions. We're gonna convert it to millions. So what I did, I, I created a, a little formula in this cell where I knew I was going to be putting the whole CapEx over here and backing out what half of that is. So I'm assuming that's our maintenance capital expenditures. Uh, and then for the income tax 
provision. Uh, we've got to go to page 44. <clears throat> so this is going to be on the income statement. So if we look at uh, income tax provision, okay? Provision is going to be in uh, parentheses if it's a provision or if it's a benefit, it's not going to be in parentheses. So we have 693 million provision for income tax. So we're going to add 693 here, 693. So what we come up with for owner earnings, when we take operating cash flow minus maintenance capex, we add the income tax provision. We have 9,367,000,000 for owner earnings. Uh, in order to get enterprise value, uh, it's a little complex to look, you know, to pull all of the data that we need to calculate that from the 10K. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm using Morningstar here. Uh, this section of Morningstar is free, so if you don't have a premium membership, it doesn't matter. Uh, you just type in Micron for the ticker. Go to the Valuation tab, and then under Current, you'll see an Enterprise value here. So that's 53.16 billion, and I've already entered that. So this is basically what it would cost to buy out all of the owners of the business, both on the equity side and on the debt side, uh, 53.16 billion. So if we divide owner earnings by enterprise value, we get 17.6. Uh, so that's, that's great. I mean, we're looking really for anything over a 10 cap and we have a 17.6 cap here for Micron. So that's fantastic. Uh, one thing I will note, and you you may want to address this differently. Uh, one thing that Phil Town says is we want historically reasonable operating cash flow numbers. So if you look at operating cash flow, you can see what it is, uh, 2017, 18, 19, and then trailing 12 months. Uh, so the you know, the 2019 figure that we're using, you know, it's kind of nicely in between the 2017 and 2018 figures. But you can see there's been quite a dip with uh, the trailing 12 months figure. So, you know, and you probably want to look a little bit further back than 2017. Look back, say, five or 10 years and make sure that it's not an anomaly figure for this operating cash flow number. Uh, I'm fairly comfortable with uh, with this number, 13.19. You know, maybe I'd want to go a little bit less than that based on what's happening, but I also understand that what's been happening uh, is somewhat of an anomaly in and of itself. This pandemic situation that we're dealing with is not something I expect to happen uh, again in the near future. So, you know, you got to do your own uh, estimating with that. <clears throat> But yeah, so that this is what this is what I come up with for the 10 cap valuation method from Phil Town uh, using Micron as an example. So pretty compelling uh, based on uh, this first glance at Micron. I've done a few other videos about Micron if you want to kind of dive into that. I originally was interested in Micron because, you know, Monish Pabrai bought into it, uh, Li Lu bought into it. You know, as a shameless cloner, I'm definitely looking to see what some of the best investors in the world are doing. So just wanted to take a look at Micron through this uh, lens of cap rate. So that's what I got, guys. Let me know if you want to see uh, me analyze more stocks using the 10 cap method. If you have any questions about the 10 cap method, definitely uh, let me know in the comments. I also want to give a shout out to Investing with Frank. Uh, I made a video recently about Seritage Growth Properties and um, he left a comment <clears throat> kind of sharing, uh, well, I had, I had mentioned that I wanted to dive into Phil Town's 10 cap method in a video recently and Investing with Frank 
let me know that he made a video. And so I watched that and used that as some of the research that went into making this video. So big shout out to Investing with Frank and of course, Phil Town. Uh, a lot of this also came from listening to one of his recent podcast episodes where he walks through uh, how to do this kind of owner earnings to uh, what the business is worth um, analysis of you know, whether the company might be at a, at a compelling price, basically. This kind of helps us think about, is there a margin of safety here uh, with this particular investment? So anyway, guys, I will leave it at that, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.